Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 10 for chapter 5 and uh, the topic for the chapter is the Laplace transform. From this video we will start looking at applying Laplace transform for equations with discontinuous source terms. And to begin the discussion, let's talk about discontinuous function. And uh, the most basic one is the so-called the step function. Okay, so let's give a definition of uh, a step function. So um, let's say if we uh, want to look at a unit step function, and this function is also called heavy side function, and this will be u of c, c is a parameter, as a function of t, is defined as follows. So this is only defined for um, t bigger than 0. Okay? So on the interval from 0 to c, the function is 0. And then at c, the function has a jump uh, of a unit um, height of 1. So for t bigger than c, it becomes 1. So in this discussion, um, the c here is um, non-negative. Okay, so we can um, plot this function so we'll see clearly why it's called unit step. So let's say this is c, and then for the part p is less than c, the function is 0, and at c, it jumps up one unit and then after that it's one. So it looks like a, a ladder you take one step higher with unit one height. Okay? Um, just a short note, um, it is common to write for the special case when c equals zero, that is the function has a upward step at t equals 0, this function we would usually just write u of t. It's just a convention. Then um, you can also make the following observation that for the function uc of t for c bigger than 0, it can also be obtained by um, shifting the function u of t by c unit in the t-axis. Okay, that is, we can write uc of t equal to u of t minus c. That's the shift. And you can also see from the graph that and if you have a jump at 0 and then you want now a jump at c, you can just shift the graph by c unit to the right. Okay, so let's um, multiply um, the unit step function with some given function. Let's say you have a given function f of t, continues, and then, um, or not necessarily continues, just some function that's given. Then if you multiply it by uc, then we have the following. So uc multiplied by f will equal to the following. So it will be piecewisely defined. So for t less than c, bigger than 0. On that interval, because of uc is 0, so the function is 0. And then for t bigger than c, uc is 1, then we just get f of t. Okay, so um, this says that um, uc times ft would equal to ft on the interval from c to infinity and is 0 everywhere else. Okay, so um, in this case, we have a saying. We say that uc picks up the interval from c to infinity. Well, let's take a, a few examples of um, this uh, um, step function. So let's consider the function 1 minus uc of t. What would that be? Well, since we know that uc has a jump at t equal to c, then we can consider this function on two intervals. And the first is t less than c, the other is t bigger than c. So when t is less than c, we know this function is 0, so 1 minus 0, I get 1. 
And then when t is bigger than c, this function is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, so I get that. Okay, and uh, we can also and easily graph this function. It will be 1 on the interval from 0 to c, so I have 1 here, and then after that at c it has a downward jump of 1 unit and then it remains 0. Okay, so we only consider um, t bigger than 0, we'll consider initial value problems. So. Okay, then we see that we can multiply the function 1 minus uc to some other given function. What will happen to this product? Well, then this function will equal to f of t on the interval from 0 to c. Right? Because it's 1 there, and it's 0 everywhere else. Okay, so now we say that the function 1 minus uct picks up the interval from 0 to c, because it's 1 here, it will let the function, and the, mot and the product, to be the function on that interval. Okay, so our next example um, is um, well, what we call a rectangular pulse. Let's consider two values of a and b such that a is bigger than 0 and b is bigger than a but bounded. And let's consider the function ua of t minus ub of t. So here is how the graph of this function will look like. So. Um, for t less than a, they are both 0, so it is 0. And then at a, and this remains 0, then this function has an upward jump with 1 unit, so the function jumps to 1, and it remains because it's constant, and no change here, until it reaches b, and then this one with a negative sign will make the value jump downward by 1 unit and then after that it's zero. So um, we see that the graph um, looks like a rectangle on the upper half plane, therefore this is called a rectangular pose. Okay, and then if you multiply the rectangular pose with some given function f t, then you know that um, this product will equal to ft on the interval from a to b because that's 1 for this guy, so it equals to ft on that interval and 0 everywhere else because you're multiplying by 0. Okay, so um, we say that the rectangular pose function here picks up this interval from a to b. Okay, and now we will learn how to express discontinuous function in terms of step functions. Let's take an example. Let's consider function g of t equals t squared um, for t between 0 and a, and 0 for t bigger than a. So we see that um, since g is non-zero only on this interval, then we can write it as uh, this function here multiplied by that um, um, combination of uh, um, step function that picks up this interval, which is 1 minus ua of t. Okay, So a piecewise written function like that can be expressed in just one single expression by using this step function. And then um, one can extend that um, to consider more general um, situation. Let's say I have a function h of t, is t square on the interval from 0 to a, and is sine t from a to b, and 0 for t bigger than b. So what one can do is write it as follows. Write this function here, and then multiply by the function that picks up this interval, that's 1 minus ua of t and then go to the second non-zero one, write the function sine t, and then multiply by the um, whatever function we have that picks up here, here will be the rectangular pose, so it will be uat minus ubt.
and the last one is zero so we don't need to do anything to it okay and what happens if we add another function in it so for t bigger than b we added another function well you can write it out in a completely similar way so t square will be multiplied by what picks up this interval which is here and sine t is multiplied by what picks up this interval is here and then et is multiplied by what picks up this interval that's up of t okay so in the previous examples we put some functions in there it should be apparent to us that those functions the t square the sine t et they are just dummies meaning that they're placeholders you can replace them with uh, any functions okay so let's say i have a function gt which uh, equal to f1 on the interval 0 to a some function f2 from a to b and some function f3 t bigger than b and then we can basically follow the same um, principle and write out so what will the g be well it will be take this function f1 multiply by what picks up that interval 1 minus uat and then plus um, this function f2 times what picks up this interval ua minus ub and then plus f3 times what picks up this interval that's ub okay so in summary um the the final form here would be take each function fi multiply by the step function that picks up the corresponding interval that it it, it lives and, and then you add up all these terms okay so um, the next example is kind of a, a inverse of what we have done so here we also need to understand how to find your way back that is if I give you a function using the step functions we also must understand what it means okay let's consider the following function ft equal to u3t times t squared minus u5t times et okay. so would you be able to evaluate this function at various values of t and let's say t is 2 and 4 and 6 and how do you do that okay so we need to recall the definition of uc and apply that okay so let's say t equal to f2 then would be let's just write out u3 of 2 times 2 square minus u5 of oops that's a typo well okay so this is u sub 5 of 2 and then e to the 2 and then we need to understand what is u3 2 and u5 at 2 and then by the definition of the step function we know that 2 is less than 3 so this is 0 and then 2 is less than 5 and this is 0 so the whole thing is 0 okay so um, once this is uh, apparent then um, we can um, do it faster so what is f of 4 then it will be u3 of 4 which is 1 and then 4 square we have and then u5 of 4 4 is less than 5 it's 0 so nothing so we just have 16 okay and then um f1t is 6 um and then um u3 at 6 is 1 so i get 6 square and then u5 of 6 is also 1 and then e to the 6 then we have a minus sign okay so um that's um, all the examples of uh, um, dealing with the step functions and discontinuous functions and then this is an introduction to this topic and next time we will um, connect this with the laplace transform and see um, how this can be used in solving differential equations okay so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time